Receiving simulator transmission. Uploading transmitted feed. Initializing playback sequence. Log execute. Hey everyone, Cypher here, and welcome back to Cypher Plays Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we took on the Viridian City Gym Leader, Blue, or rather our rival formerly known as Blue, and handily trounced, well, I guess I shouldn't say handily trounced him, he did put up quite a bit of fight compared to the other Kanto Gym Leaders, but we did end up beating him. And for that effort, we got our 16th and final badge, thus making us a verified legend. We then received a call from Professor Oak that we have a gift waiting for us back in Palatown. But before we go and claim that, I want to do another option. Another optional thing, sorry about that. Uh, after beating all the Kanto gym leaders, the Pokemon League has been revamped. The Elite Four and the Champion all have new teams, and I want to challenge them because I am a glutton for punishment. So, I'm going to quickly just go over my team right now because I did do quite a bit of training off screen. So, let's go down the line and see what changes have happened. Starting off, the reinvigorated Avenger, Ash. Pretty much same as he was. I did get rid of Cut because at this point we don't need it anymore, and I decided Brick Break would be a good move for him in case he ever has to fight a rock type or whatever, and the fact that I can be super effective against something. And his attack stat's not all that bad, so I guess I've been a bit neglecting it, even though really his main job is Flamethrower and nothing else. Next, the brilliant King of Ghosts himself, Pariah. Pretty much the same as I left him the last few times that we went over him. Uh, Shadow Ball, Psychic, Thunderbolt, and Giga Drain. He's pretty much here just for hitting hard with special attacks, and those choice specs that he's holding are guaranteed to help out. And uh, as I had said before, uh, well, I didn't say before, uh, Ash is also still holding the Charcoal. Pretty much the only good items that they've got. Up next, the Scarlet Samurai himself, Jin, also hasn't changed much, still carrying Bullet Punch, Bug Bite, Aerial Ace, and Swords Dance, holding a Metal Coat, just to make that Bullet Punch a bit more powerful. That Technician ability really boosting all the damaging moves that he has. Pretty much guaranteed to hit hard once he gets those Swords Dances under his belt. Next, the Starman waiting in sea and would see his... Uber-type coverage will make the dragons flee. Bowie, the Starmie, is still here, carrying Surf, Psychic Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt. Pretty much, if I had had this move set back when I first challenged the Elite Four, they would have been a complete joke. Or at least the first three members would have. Because he can pretty much take care of anything in his way. Still carrying the Never Melt Ice, I may change things around depending on certain members of this Elite Four because their teams have changed and gotten a, quite a good deal of difficulty increase. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, next, we have Kuma, the gentle tyrant himself, replacing Toshinori, the dark hero, and doing pr rather well. He's had a minor change to him. I finally checked his uh, happiness and friendship with me, and he is actually at or close to max happiness, so Return will be his strongest normal type move at this point. Gonna be hitting hard with a, with that beefy attack set. Also carrying Earthquake and Crunch for tight coverage, and Rest just so that he can heal off mid-fight, even though I do have healing potions and could use those. You never know when you might need something. Uh, and finally... The Eternal Phantom Slayer herself, Ulsa Creed. Pretty much the same as she's been since we first got her back in Johto. Carrying Dragon Claw, Fly, Extreme Speed, and Dragon Dance. Holding that Dragon Fang. Pretty much going to be my backup sweeper in case I can get those six Dragon Dances under our belt. Uh, pretty much... Not any different from what we've actually been rocking with the last leg of Kanto, so 
let's just not waste any more time. I did buy uh, quite a few more full restores, a few full heals, and I did top off our Moo Moo milks, but that's about it. Nothing really to do now, but go in to this. So let's start this Elite Four rematch. Once you enter this door, you'll be facing one of the Elite Four. They are really tough. You cannot exit once you enter. Are you ready? Be courageous and go for it. All right. Well, no turning back now. Well, well, uh, actually, before we talk to you, I want to be sure to swap Pariah in because he's going to be the key to this fight, just like he was last time. So let's get right on into this. Welcome to the Pokemon League. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Will. Yeah, we've already met you before. I've trained all around the world, making my Psychic-type Pokemon powerful. And at last I've been accepted into the Elite Four. You said all this before, right? You know what? I'm just not going to bother. We're just going to get right on into this. So, I don't have perfect knowledge of his, t of his team this time. I've only seen the Elite Four rematch teams twice in my life. And I didn't even fight them myself when I played back in the day, so this is going to be an interesting experience. In any case, starting off with a Bronzong, pretty solid. At this point in the games, it has no weakness to Ghost that I can exploit, so here's hoping the Shadow Ball with Choice Specs is enough. Then again, what am I saying? It's level 58, we're level 75. This was really just a means for me to test my team's strength and get them closer to the new level cap, because despite beating Blue, uh, we do still have a level cap for our eventual rematch with the Identity Thief himself of 85. But this is just really a test of the waters, so let's get right on into it. I don't imagine any trouble from Will like I didn't have any trouble in the last encounter we had with him, so let's just see if we can Shadow Ball everything down. And so far, so good. Do wish that these were giving a bit more experience, though. And she's copied my Levitate. Oh well, not like I had any ground-type moves for you to avoid. I kind of hate how slow the HP drops in Generation 4. I know it's probably just a technical limitation of the DS, but it does make it kind of frustrating. Oh well. They'll just all fall eventually. Yeah, pretty much rhyming, just like the last time we fought. Well, all these Shadow Balls are going to take him down easy peasy. Okay. And you still are using a Zatu as your ace. Not really the best Pokemon, but what you do you, man. I'm not here to judge your team. Not like everyone can be as diverse. Well, technically you can, but you choose not to for whatever reason. Okay. Even though I was defeated, I won't change my course. I will continue battling until I stand above all trainers. You keep telling yourself that, Will. Now move on and experience the true ferocity of the Elite Four. Alright, well... Just like with last time, I want to actually swap my team around. Because... This is actually the first... This next battle is actually the first one that I fear in these rematches, because I do know at least one move set on, one, on the Pokemon that Koga here is going to lead with. Wah! I'm Koga of the Elite Four. I live in the shadows of Ninja. My intricate cell will confound and confuse you. Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be victim to my sinister, sinister techniques. Okay, well, you actually can back that up now because your team is honestly vastly improved 
Granted, its types have become more singular, but I still fear this thing a lot more. Case in point, this Skun Tank. Skun Tank has a wide variety of moves, and this one is very dangerous. Explosion, Dig, Sucker Punch, and Toxic. Luckily, I'm immune to Toxic with Jin, but he still has Dig, which could be a bit scary. And it is faster than me. So I'm just going to quickly get as many Swords Dances up as I can and hope that I don't take too much damage. Alright, well, thankfully he didn't go for Sucker Punch at all during this. And because I know he's faster than me, I'm going to use Bug Bite rather than Bullet Punch. And you have to be careful with this thing because Skun Tank has the ability Aftermath, which will immediately take a quarter of your HP off of the Pokémon if you attack it with a physical move that makes contact, I believe. Not sure entirely. But yeah, that can be dangerous. You could easily be worn down by this Pokémon and have you have yourself die because you killed it. Luckily, I think I made it through just fine. And thankfully, I don't think anything else has a priority move, so Bullet Punch should be able to take care of everything from here. My main worry was that that thing would use Explosion, because that can... It's basically a 250 power normal type move that halves the opponent's defense and kills your own Pokémon. So basically a 500 power normal type move. And if you crit, that's basically a thousand power. So, very dangerous. Luckily, yeah, I think that I'm in the clear now, because if that thing had gone off, I'm not entirely sure how I would take care of the rest of this team, since Jin's my poison-type immunity. But, luckily, no I don't have to think about that anymore. We can just bullet punch the rest with the plus six metal coat bullet punch. Uh, technician bullet punch. Ooh. Okay. Well, I guess I would say that we are in the clear, but we still do have the rest of the Elite Four to go through. And I do not remember their teams nearly at all, so this is going to be an interesting uh, challenge to address, but hopefully we should have the tools to handle it. Okay, your last Pokemon's a small lot. This thing could be tanky, but I think Bullet Punch should do it. I mean, I'd be pretty shocked if it didn't, honestly, with how strong I've made Jim. Okay, there we go. Well, crisis averted. We haven't lost anyone on the first two Elite Four members. Thank goodness. Subjecting me to everything you can muster. You're honestly a lot scarier in the rematch compared to how you were in the first time round. And I'm thankful that I managed to squeak by without any deaths. So, let's actually quickly heal up before we head to the next room. I'm just going to use one of these Moo Moo Milks. Actually, you know what? Let's do two. Do we actually have anything weaker? No, we don't. Yeah, I still haven't used my seven rare candies. I'm saving them for after we get through this, or if we need to boost somebody up for the challenges ahead. Anyway, now I actually want to swap something around, because I'm going to first put Bowie back in the lead. Oh, well... Ash back in the lead and then put Bowie in the lead. Then I want to take his Never Melt Ice. And I'm going to take Pariah's Choice Specs. And I'm going to give the Choice Specs to Bowie. Now, because back when we first fought Bruno and uh, 
I had mentioned that Bowie would be perfect if he had Psychic or any Psychic-type attacking move. Uh, that he would rip through the team. And I would like to say that that might have been a little bit of an overstatement. Well, maybe not exactly, but it's definitely needed that he has the choice specs here. So I'm just going to give him the choice specs right now since he's my main plan for this. And I'm going to give uh, Pariah the Twisted Spoon just for a little bit of a boost since he's not going to be holding anything. However, I probably shouldn't be really saying about up this right now because I actually don't intend to fight uh, Bruno right now. I intend on ending the episode here because I just want to take these kind of like how I did with the first go round each episode two elite four members and then a climactic episode with the champion. So with that and us here before Bruno, I'm going to end things off right here. So I want to thank you all for watching until next time. Stay gold. Playback sequence terminated. Transmission disconnected.